Here by Big Z, hope everyone's doing good. Uh, beautiful day, so I thought I'd take a break here at lunch and shoot a quick video. Uh, I wanna first give a huge thank you to Tony Sayers for uh, doing the interview we did a couple weeks ago. Um, it was funny because I left the comment and he wrote me back and said, you know, let's do this interview. And I'm like, okay, so we didn't have, we never even spoke, we've never met or spoke before. And um, so we connected and I think we had like, a 30 second conversation and he just said hey just go with it so it was raw unrehearsed uncut and uh so you know i was nervous i didn't think it was going to turn out good in fact i wrote him afterwards and said low bro if you don't like this don't feel obligated to post a video and he was like oh no we're going with it and i was like oh shit and uh anyway i think it turned out pretty good comments have been amazing i think there's like 200 on there by the day and everyone's been so nice and um those that come over to my channel and left the comments there, I did not expect that because I'm shadow banned. And uh, wow, so it's, it's been really awesome. Huge again, shout out to Tony. He is really an authentic, straight up dude. I mean, how you not love this guy? Um, he's sincere, but he's all man too. And um, so I greatly appreciate him and everyone from that family being here. To my family at Lady Babylon, uh, if you want to see the interview, just Tony Sayers, and it's the most recent one. And go check him out. I know most of you probably know who he is. But again, awesome guy. And it'd be nice to kind of see all of us, you know, kind of come together because what Dr. Almond Hillman does, oh God, if Almond got on Tony's channel for an interview, that would be incredible. Um, Almond's one of a kind, everybody. You know, he's just, if you go there, warning, you're going to be addicted. And uh, you won't, it's just, dude shatters everything. He's just awesome. So, you know, it kind of brings me into remind me of something. Um, and I'm going to talk about Sophia in this video, but uh, spiritual MMA. And I was going to do a separate video on this, but let's just talk about it. So I, I, I apply a lot of what I do in my life to my, my training I've done. And growing up, I was into the Japanese arts and I moved over to the Chinese arts for a while. I uh, ended up in karate and because, uh, you know, when you're younger. And I went from there into a Muay Thai camp and I had a Muay Thai instructor. His name was Mike Lament. He used to beat the shit out of me. Anyway, we decided about eight years into this, you know, hey, the grappling thing's big. We need to learn this. And I had a friend that I went to high school with that ended up moving to Brazil to teach English down there. And his next door neighbor is Carlos Sr., Gracie Sr. And he ends up over at Gracie, who am I Thai? And then they came up here and, you know, we brought that discipline into our school and, you know, everything. And, you know, we brought some Greco-Roman wrestling guys in and, you learn something in MMA, if you're gonna fight, you gotta have at least three or four of these disciplines uh, in, into one. And I apply that in, in the spiritual thing too, what's going on here. And with knowledge, it takes disciplines, multiple disciplines of knowledge to bring together so we can put this whole thing back together. And before I talk about Sophia, I wanna talk about Hypatia. You know, I think it was 371 AD where uh, Constantine and his assholes, uh, these Christian guys that, you know, up in Rome, hear about Hypatia down there. And um, so they send their little, their henchmen down to shut her up because Hypatia is this beautiful woman, young girl. Um, she's like one of the most well-known philosophers. She's a mathematician, a uh, Neoplatonist, a astrologer, and she's teaching in these universities down in Alexandria. And uh, one of the things that she's saying, according to John Lamb Lash is, hey, we got an alien presence here, meaning these people with those funky noses. And she was warning about this thing and that's not, it didn't wash. So they go down there and they decide to encourage her to shut her mouth. And the way they did that was uh, they took her out in the street and a group of Christian men, you know, good Christian men, and the first man punched her in the mouth and broke her jaw. Very descriptive. Um, if you want to see a reenactment of this, YouTube has a, there's a movie called Agoria with Rachel Wise, who was in the Mummy movies. She plays Hypatia. You should definitely watch it. It's beautiful, isn't she? Anyway, they take a little Hypatia, they punch her in the mouth, they break her jaw, and being the good Christian men that they are, they raped her and sodomized her. And while they're raping and sodomizing this young virgin woman, whose first sexual experience is a rape, uh, they get a little rough and they break her arms and then they break her legs and they continue to rape her and uh, they basically beat her to nothing. And she lies there just 
beaten all up, being raped, um, to the point where they crushed her rib cage, and then they took stones and beat her down, and then they went and took oyster shells, sharp oyster shells, and cut her flesh off of her. Yeah. For doing what? Not going along with this new Yahweh, Jehovah God bullshit. And, uh, of course, then they went ape shit and they burned down the libraries and all of our knowledge and teachings from the people we call the Gnostics. Um, and so it's very hard for us to gain that information back. And, you know, in 1945, when the Nagamati scriptures were found, we get pieces and fragments of it. And thank you, John Land Lash, for the, all the years it took for him to put these things back together. And we have somewhat of a picture of who we are and where we come from. And that's where we get Sophia from. And Sophia, if you, most everybody knows about her, briefly, in the original creation story and in the tripart tractate, I think it's in there too, um, you have the higher realms, which is called the Pleroma. You have the lower realms are called the Stereoma. In the higher realms, we have the source energy consciousness of everything. It's called the Nomad, the Monad, excuse me. And the Monad has its first emanation, which is of itself in a way, a reflection and it's called the womb man which is barbello and she is amazing she's all powerful and she is capable of parthogenesis which means she can create on her own but she has a symbiotic relationship with the monad him being a male energy and her being more feminine and they do everything together and then they desire a child they produce a child and that's the aeons and the gods and the goddesses that are up there one of the younger goddesses that is there is a goddess called sophia and her name means wisdom. And she has a consort, uh, so to speak, her male part, and his name is Aphelite. And you could say these are like our parents. But Sophia's amazing. Sophia's kind of this young Aeon. And picture, I, you know, I raised a young girl, a daughter. And picture a young girl with long curly hair. She's short. She's tough. She's on the equestrian team. She's uh, on the soft. She plays softball. She plays all the sports. She's tough. Um, she sings and she's, you know, she's a, a plus student, super smart, and she's just a firecracker and she's a little bit rebellious and she doesn't trust what she's being told and she's independent. And this young Aeon, Sophia decides, you know, I want to do something on my own. I want to show mommy and daddy I can do something. And she, a little bit of this rebell rebellious streak in her, kind of like us, uh, she creates an entity which she regrets. And she does it without the consent of a felite, and it produces this creature we call the Demiurge or Yaldabaoth. And he's a hideous thing, and he's an asshole. He's a redheaded stepchild type of a, I mean, this guy is a, a real asshole. And um, he goes on, as we know, to creating his own worlds, thinking he's the, the shit of all shit. And he creates his archons and these lower entities and this realm, this copy that of the higher realm. And that's where we are. And we know the whole thing there. The reason why I brought that up, there was a comment over on Tony's channel, which I appreciated. And this gentleman wrote, um, I blame Sophia for everything. It was her fucked up mistake that did all this. And this is why we're in the mess that we're in. And I would say, I absolutely agree with you. It is her mistake. Let's, let's just take that for a moment. So these are our parents, and one of our parents made a mistake. Really? Oh, you mean they're not the perfect, all-being, all-knowing God who would just appeared out of nowhere and has never done anything wrong and just magically knows all the wisdom of everything? What a fucking bullshit story. Those people in the higher aeons, realms, they probably learn more from us than we learn from them. Like when we have children. And we have children, our children grow up initially to think that mom and dad are the greatest things ever. And then they go to become teenagers and they start getting smart and thinking they know everything. Then they go to college and they do know everything, right? And they rebel against mom and dad. And then they go through a stage where they blame mom and dad for everything. And then they end up marrying and... Um, oh, got a message, sorry. So they end up blaming everything on mom and dad until they get married and have children. And then they realize, oh fuck, I'm making a bigger mess than mom and dad made. And their kids are learning the same thing. And it's a cycle. Well, it's the same thing. And I think that's refreshing. I think it's great to know that, you know, it was in the movie, um, it was one of Sylvester Stallone's later Rambo movies, um, where his son <clears throat> has a chip on his shoulder 
and he's blaming everything on his dad, and his dad sets him straight, you know, because he can't live up to his father because he's the world champion. He'll never be his dad, and, you know, he tells, I don't want you to be me. You be you, you know, and so it's the same thing. It's refreshing to know that we don't have creators that are perfect, that we can never live up to their standards. If anything, we can excel ourselves above them, and that's what Goggins makes another point about. He says, you know, you get to heaven and there's this board and it has everything that you were supposed to do on it. He goes, I don't want to be the person that said, oh, I missed out on all that. He wants to be the person that says, not only did he do everything on that board, but he blew that fucking thing out of the water. And he did so many accomplishments that the creator says, we were having to write your life as you were living it. You did so much. And that's what we need to do. Now, Sophia has been attacked by these fucking archons the entire time. She, going back, let me go back on this. So when y'all the boss created, she takes his ugly ass and puts him in a, a luminous cloud and she's embarrassed and she's ashamed of him. And she tries to fix the problem, but every time she does, she exacerbates it, makes it worse. And so the upper aeons have to step in and she goes up and confesses what she's done, and she's really sorrowful for it. I mean, she really repents for this mistake she makes, and she's got to live with it, you know? So she tries to correct it. It would be like the woman who went out here and slept with some dude she knew she wasn't supposed to be with, and it produced a child, and this child is a complete fucking terror on the world. She's still its mother, and she's trying to correct it, but she can't. So the high Aryans step in, and they decide to take... Um, this Yaldabaoth dude, when he makes Mudman, us, drops some essence in it, and we were supposed to be this dude's slave. Now we have the power to kick his nutsack, and that's the war, and that's what's going on. So, yeah, Sophia did create this problem, but she's done everything she can to correct it, and it's up to us now to fix it. You know, if, if your parents made a mistake, uh, do you want to blame them for it, or do you want to fix the problem? You know the old saying, the buck stops here? I have a saying, you'll learn about it later. Buck stops here, and he knows who he is. Anyway, so it's up to us to fix this problem and kick their little asses. I said this before, you've had me say it. I take this Demiurge, Yahweh, Yaldabaoth, uh, Jehovah, whatever his name is, I make him my little bitch because that's what he is. He's a little bitch. And those archons are fucking impotent, ineffective, little scared, chicken shit, ugly fuckers. And I, pff, fuck them. I don't, I don't even address these little turds, okay? And Yahweh, he can go fuck himself. My war actually is not with them. My war is with the higher Aeons up there, the ones that aren't doing anything to help us. The ones when we cry out, it's like, where's the help? And there is none. Because these fuckers think they're better than everybody else. And they're like, uh, you know, we didn't come down there and we didn't incarnate in the material world. So, you know, that's your problem. And we're like, hey, you know, we could use some help. And they're pretentious assholes. They're the ones I had the biggest problem with. Not the Archons. The Archons are just whatever the fuck they are. We got to, there's something else going on here. Anywho. I just want to put Sophia in, where we at 13 minutes? I just want to put Sophia in context is who she is. She's really like our mother. And you want to hear another horrible story, which we'll talk about later, is when uh, Adam's, Adam, they make Adam and they put you know, the essence into Adam. And then Zoe, which means life, becomes Eve, comes in. What they did to Eve in the garden is almost as bad as what they did to Hypatia when they gang-banged and gang-raped our mother. That's what these Archons did. And you know who the Archons are. They're embodied here. They're called Freemasons. Yeah. No, not an attack on our divine feminine at all, right? It's up to us to defend our mother. It's up to us to beat the fucking shit out of these piece of crap Archons. Put that little bitch in his place and then straighten out these higher Aeons that think they're better than everybody else. So if you don't think you have importance while you're here, we're more important than them and the beings above us. Everything is on us. It's like David Wilkerson said, there are three intelligences that watch us constantly. The higher Aeons are watching to see what we're doing. The underworld Aeons are like, and the Archons, what are they doing? And you got the people here, our friends and family watching us. All eyes are on us. The whole thing is on us. 
That's why we do everything we can. That's why, that's why we all get attacked. Those of you who are watching this video, you know what it's like to be a TI, to be fucking tormented by this shit. It's, you know, it goes with it. And that's why what we do is so important. Why we need to, as one person said, kind of collectively come together and make our intent collective. And, um, what's, what do you call it? Um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, that's why we're here. Um, Sophia, she's our mother. Not perfect. No parent is. But it's up to us to um, correct whatever problems that we can. So, anyway, that's that. We're at 15 minutes. I got cut off here because I want to try to get this on BitChute. Once again, thank you to everyone who has left so many comments. Thank you. Um, this was a little soft. Next one, I'm going to fucking rip it out of the water. And uh, so look forward to that one. I love everybody, and I'm out.